Come on, we're gonna go check out your run. Come on. Oh, humble. Come here. Hello. Come on. So we just put up um, the T post and I opted to buy the seven foot posts um, because just in case the emu can jump, you know, five feet, I wanted to give that extra foot of room and I put the seven foot ones on the ground so you have about six foot clearance on them right now. Come on, buddy. I have him out right now. Where are you? He doesn't leave my side usually, so he's easy to babysit. But uh, Charlie and Delta, they just keep running straight out in the field and out in the woods, so I can't babysit them right now. I have to wait until this, this fence is up today or tomorrow, and that's the next step. And then I have to get the enclosure built, which is gonna take a couple days, because I have to make it large enough for, you know, three or four emus. Hey, buddy. So the good part is, is that we have a lot of land here. So I started with a 40 by 40 foot enclosure, uh, fenced off for at least two of them. Uh, and then I'm thinking about doing a 20 by 40 just for maybe breeding season for just one male. These guys need definitely a lot of room to run, so I'm trying to give as much as they can. At this age, they don't obviously need as much space as an adult, so as they get older, I'm gonna expand the enclosure you know, to fit their needs. Um, but right now, I think a 40 by 40 for you know, uh, two or three of them should be fine. So we got the fencing started yesterday, and we're hoping to finish it today. It's actually pretty tall fencing. Yeah, I'm, I'm six foot, and it's a little taller than my head. So maybe six and a half feet. So I just came back from the vet, and thankfully, um, he was able to diagnose him with aspergillosis, which is a fungal infection. So his symptoms were respiratory, and it was scaring me that it might be contagious just because one of the other emus had it. But um, it's treatable, it's not contagious. Uh, it is infectious to him, so it, you know he doesn't feel well right now, but he will recover from um, all the symptoms that, that he has right now. So he's just out in the field right now with me taking a walk, I just gave him a shot. Come here. So some ways that birds like emus can actually get this disease is by either breathing in the spores or ingesting it. And in this case, I think that they ingested the spores because I just checked the feed and it's actually a year past its expiration date and I just bought it yesterday. So I'll contact the feed company tomorrow because it's, it's ridiculous. You know, it's my mistake for not checking labels, but I think that's what happened in this case. So I'm just grateful that I caught it in time uh, and that it's being treated. So I have some grow outs in my olive egger pen just until they're ready to breed. You can see he's a, a coal black copper marins. He has some white under fluff, an insanely high tail, but he's great at making olive egger uh, chicks because he has dark egg genes. And so if you can see this guy, he's a keeper so far. And so I have a little pen inside this run too because they, they just like to lay in it or hang out in it. So here's some more grow outs. It's a leg bar cockerel, some olive eggers, leg bar females. You can see the color difference. And this one is one of my keepers, hopefully. This is a black copper marins male. 
is nice width, nice color, a low tail set. So he's one of the coals. He's another coal, unfortunately. But they they have good egg genes, so I'll keep them in here to make uh, you know, more pretty olive eggs. A few blue wheat and Americanas. And then I like to, you know, set stuff up inside the actual pens with them just because I feel like they get bored all the time. So the guy I showed you before, the black copper ram's cockerel, this is uh, the same one uh, from the same hatch. And you can tell just the size difference. He's much smaller, much narrower. His tail set, his tail set is significantly higher already at a young age than this guy. Uh, he almost looks like he's maybe a month or two older than him, but that's just uh, what you kind of have to breed for. These are more... Black Copper Marin's grow outs, uh, some pullets right here. You can see she has almost no copper around her hackles. She looks like a, a keeper so far. She has a nice uh, wide tail set as well. And then over here, <laughs> she's a keeper too. You know, it's still young to tell. So I will update everyone with a video maybe in a day or two with the finished run and the finished enclosure that may be a couple days from now uh, to update everyone on the ostrich egg it was due to hatch in a week from today and of course I come in after school to my room and it smells like death and the egg is oozing everywhere uh, I had a feeling at day 12 that it you know it was uh, infected with bacteria but you know I gave it a little time and it, it just it, it was not developing so the breeder actually offered to give me one egg for free, and so I got this in the mail today. <laughs> I'm gonna try one more time. You know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, but you know, 42 days from now, I guess, we'll see.